What's up, everybody? It's Pykel with League of Items, and somebody in Discord brought it to my attention that ESPN Esports released a top 20 players at Worlds list. Now, it's it's going to be difficult for me to put together this kind of list uh, without uh, like having a clear methodology for ranking individual players because I think that uh, ESPN Esports didn't really have a clear reasoning for why they thought they didn't have like a, uh, a, a criteria they applied to all players it was kind of like on a player by player basis that they had different criteria I haven't looked at their final list yet but the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to go based off of the, the one of the main things that I know that they did was uh, disregard all of the wildcard teams and every, everybody from, like, Vietnam. So I'm kind of going to do the same thing. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to put together a top 20 team. Or I'm going to rank every team that's at Worlds as well. So it's going to take a little bit of time. But by the end of it, I think that we're going to have some good information going into Worlds. And, I mean, I think it's it's only fair to say I, I haven't watched a lot of these wildcard teams play. Uh so it's going to be difficult to rank them and figure out how, how good they could actually be. Um, so that's, that's my caveat. caveat. Uh, it's not, I don't feel as confident in this list as I do in most lists because there are a lot of unknown quantities. Um, but with that being said, let's do our best. Let's give it the old college try. Uh, ESPN top 20, my top 20, and then ranking each team at Worlds. So we'll do the ranking each team at Worlds first. Um, but first, we need to understand which teams we're going to include in this list. Um, so let's start with the play-in teams. And like I said, anybody outside of the major regions that I'm not familiar with, I'm not going to include them in this ranking. Uh, I, I know it's unfair, but I don't have enough information. So we'll say super massive. Let's see if I know any of the players. I know that I, I will know some of these players, but that's about it. Uh, what was the last one? Team Liquid, Mad Lions, LGD. Okay, super massive. Super massive has Cacao, Snowflower, and I know that their coach is uh, GBM. Um, so they have some good players, but like I said, it's, it's impossible to know without watching them extensively. And I haven't done that. So I'm not going to pretend like I have, uh, legacy esports. This is a team from Australia. They have a top laner from Korea. Um, I don't like Turkey has never sent a team very deep in the, in worlds. Australia hasn't sent a team deep in worlds. Latin America hasn't either. Don't really have anything for that. Japan, don't have anything for that. They haven't made it very far in world. I don't think they've made it far at all. I don't even think they've made the finals. The uh, the made it through plans. Unicorns of Love. Uh, so Unicorns of Love was a organization that had a, a spot in the EU LCS when it was the EU LCS, but they didn't get their franchising. I think so. They changed. INTZ made it from Brazil. Um, not Santos, which was a surprise for me. I stopped watching Brazil. Just too much time to keep up with all the all the big leagues. Um, I'm not expecting much from INTZ. PSG Talon, don't know. Okay, so we have Team Liquid, Mad Lions, and LGD. So for right now, I'm going to get rid of all these other teams. I could, I could put... INTZ, but I would just rank them lower than everybody else anyways, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste my time or yours. TL MAD and LGD. So let's let's rank these three teams against one another they're gonna be in the play-in stage, so they haven't qualified for the main event yet but uh, you know, this is how they get in so let's do it in reverse order, so t we'll go TL first, then MAD Lions and then LGD, and I'll try to give some context. So Team Liquid, okay. Spring Team Liquid, 
underperformed. Everybody was very low on them throughout the world because they seemingly fell off a cliff. Um, summer comes around and they start playing better. Now they have gotten rid of double lift. They have a new AD carry tactical and then they have Jat as their coach. Um, it seemed to work for most of the split, but you're beating up on a bunch of bad North American teams. The way that I would think of it is like Gen G in Korea. Gen G does a really good job beating everybody else, but when it comes time to play against one of the top teams, it's a little bit more difficult for them in a best of three or a best of five. So that's that's kind of how I feel about Team Liquid. I don't trust them against a lot of the top teams. Um, so while I'm making this list, I'm also going to put considerations for top 20 players, right? So Impact, uh, definitely a player that's uh, past his prime. He is not even a huge difference maker in North America most of the time. Um, so that's kind of what I'm expecting from from him in, the, in this point of the competition and even uh, Worlds. Uh, like this, if, if Team Liquid makes it through, obviously it will require Impact to play well, but I don't expect Impact to carry them through uh, the entire tournament. Um, work emails. Uh, okay. So impact, not even the best player on his own team. I'm not. I'm not putting him in a top twenty. Broxa, good player when he was on Fnatic. I think he was a little overrated coming to Team Liquid. I think that it was a little overrated because it's like, oh, player from EU going to North America. He's going to be the best player in North America. Uh, I don't know if anybody was really saying that, but he was viewed as an upgrade over X Smithy. And has he been that much of an upgrade? Not really clear. I would say probably not. Um, but the reason that they went for somebody like Broxa is not only for North America, but also to do better at Worlds. The goal is to do very good at Worlds, um, and that's why he was brought in. Uh, Jensen, um, another player that's past his prime. I don't think he is the best mid laner in North America. Uh, if we were ranking best players at Worlds, or best mid laners at Worlds, he wouldn't be a top five mid laner at Worlds, so he's not going to be a top 20 player. Um, tactical gets way too much hype as a rookie i mean it's just the truth uh and then core jj everybody likes saying that core jj is like some some amazing player but he's playing against um uh, north american players uh and when you win you look good so it's it's really tough i'm gonna put core jj as the best player from the team i know that he's one of the only players that they considered uh, for the top 20 for ESPN Esports, so I'm just going to follow suit. Mad Lions. Okay, so Mad Lions is a team that ESPN Esports had highly rated the entire year. They thought that they were going to uh, be the summer champions or something like that. They thought that they finally took the throne from G2, uh, but who was telling you the entire time that G2 would most likely just end up being the best team from Europe, uh, and that is what we saw in the summer. So that's it's it's tough <laughs> it's it's tough to kind of say anything else besides that like uh eventually the better team normally finds a eventually the better team will find a way that's kind of what my um the way I look at things so I can't change now I've done pretty well this year I can't change how I look at everything right now so mad lions Arome, not a difference maker. Shadow had a very underwhel underwhelming summer playoffs, but I think Shadow is better than what he, what he showed in playoffs. Humanoid is a good player, but I think overrated uh, relative to all these other regions. Karzi, an okay AD carry, but when, you're, when your best style of play has been like Senna for an entire season, it's it kind of reminds me of Kramer, where Kramer is a good utility AD carry, but not necessarily the best ca carry AD carry, where you need to put the team on your back. Um, and that's an important distinction because it's like the difference between Chris Middleton and somebody like Damian Lillard. Like if, if you're a basketball team and you are in the fourth quarter and you're down 10, do you want Dame or do you want Chris Middleton? 
uh, I think we all know the answer to that one. It's Dame Lillard. So Carsey and Kramer, I'm basically saying they are the Chris Middletons of the world. Very good at basketball, obviously. Or very good at League of Legends like Chris Middleton is at basketball. But they're not superstar players, regardless of how much they get talked about by the media, by fans. At the end of the day, you, it's just an obvious difference between the actual best players in the world and people who are like quote unquote all stars or like the second best player on a team. Like that's just the way that it is. So if if I was giving if I was giving best twenty players at Worlds based off of summer performances, I'd probably give it to to Humanoid. If I was doing it by talent, I'd probably give it to Shadow. So I'll put Shadow slash Humanoid. Um, Spoiler alert, I don't expect many of these players to make the top 20. Uh, LGD. Uh, I was on LGD for most of the summer. I knew that they were underrated in the beginning, and I, I liked the upgrades that they made to their team. Bringing in Longshi, bringing in Xie were both good acquisitions. We have Peanut, Kramer, and Mark. Uh, Kalua played a little bit at one point, which was kind of weird, but I'm pretty sure they're going to go with Mark at Worlds. Um... So Longshi's, it's another, it's the same thing. He's he's not the focal point of the team. So I'm not going to say he's the best player on the team. Kramer, not the focal point. Mark, not the focal point. The only two players that would be considered are Peanut and Shie. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe at some point I'll go into a different video where I look at it lane by lane, but that sounds like a lot of work. And I've got a lot of work going on right now in real life, so I'm not trying to give myself too much extra work. Um, so we have those three teams so far. If I was ranking these three teams, Team Liquid, Mad Lions, and LGD. We're just going to we're gonna put some space in between them just so we can fit other teams in. Um, so this is our starting point, and then we're going to rank teams into this, and then we'll go from there. All right, FlyQuest. FlyQuest, we have Solo, Santorin, Power of Evil, Wild Turtle, and Ignar. So Solo uh, had a horrible finals against TSM. I don't think that is... I don't think that it was, like, destined to happen that way. Solo is not as bad as he played in the finals. And at the same time, whenever one player looks really bad, it's really a team failure. It's normally a team failure. Um, he was just getting focused by TSM. Uh, partially because of the champions that he was playing. So you could p put some blame on the draft. You could put some blame on the jungler for not being able to create a lead in the other parts of the map, which is basically going to... It's going to exacerbate the problem of having a scaling top laner like GP in the finals. Drink break. <sighs> Resume. All right, so... Solo, yeah, not, like even against these other teams, not a difference maker, not somebody that I would have a ton of confidence in against these other top laners. Um, stylistically, he might be playing more carry champions than somebody like Longshi, but I don't think that I can really trust Solo to create a, a winning edge in a matchup against um, Longshi outside of what like the, the natural champion interaction would be. So, like, if it was a Gangplank versus an Orn, like, yeah, maybe the Gangplank can scale for 15 minutes or 25 minutes and then eventually hits two or three items and helps in team fights and looks very strong. And you're like, oh, my God, solo, so good. But uh, normally those, those kinds of things happen not because of the Gangplank, but the Gangplank benefits from that. So is FlyQuest better than Team Liquid? I'm going to say no. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Santorin, Power of Evil are really the two the two good players on this team, I believe. Uh, Ignar is also a good player. So Power of Evil and Ignar were on Misfits when Misfits had a pretty good showing at Worlds. They do have some world experience, which is important. Santorin, I believe, also has world experience. Um, and even if he didn't, I would still feel pretty confident that he is, he is okay. Um, will be okay on this stage. But Wild Turtle, I feel like it's a huge liability... Uh, at Worlds, and if TSM can exploit Solo, every other team should be able to exploit Solo. Uh, so I'm putting them below Team Liquid. Uh, I think that Team Liquid 
actually okay so this is this is uh, this is not going how i thought it would so thinking about the next level stylistically how are these teams going to match up against other teams that are competing at worlds i think for the play-in stage i think team liquid style is team liquid style is better for the play-in stage they're going to be able to probably beat a lot of these other teams with their macro play style but once you get into the actual finals, I don't think that it's really going to hold as much weight. A lot of these teams can force the issue, make the game go faster, and will punish Team Liquid for that. So since the only two, since the only time that these teams would actually show up against each other, oh, with the head-to-head, -head, I would still take Team Liquid. FlyQuest against FlyQuest against all the other teams in the uh, in the group stage. I think I would prefer FlyQuest's chances of getting out of the group stage but if FlyQuest played Team Liquid heads up I feel like I would prefer Team Liquid oh man tough so for this I'll put Santorin Power of Evil and Ignar I think those are three legitimate players um are they top 20 in the world probably not but for this it's fine so I would say FlyQuest is a little bit better than than Team Liquid Team solo mid. Uh, so TSM has been rounding into form. They look a lot better uh, in playoffs than they did during the regular season. But I was always kind of saying that TSM would figure it out and be competitive. Um, even when they weren't looking good, I had them in the top four, top three or top four in North America. So I was pretty consistent there. Broken Blade, I think, is a good player. I think Broken Blade can... can play well against most of the top laners here flexible champion pool can carry which is a, an important thing Spica, i'm not convinced by Spica. i know some people like watching the river shen thing but really not that not that impressive in my opinion um it requires the other team to do a lot of um waiting around and letting you scale which sometimes it's, it's unavoidable because of how drafts go but um I'm just not convinced uh, that Spica's good yet. Potential, of course, but based off what I see, I don't expect much from, from Spica at Worlds, and that would be, I guess, the big question mark for how they do. Uh, Bjergsen, obviously a very good player. The best player on TSM right now is Bjergsen. That's, uh, that's pretty obvious. Um, and then in regards to how they're going to play bot lane, will they play Biofrost or will they play Treats? That's a great question. I don't have the answer to that. If I, if I do that, does this get bigger? A little bit, okay. Um, let me turn on my fan. It's hot in here. All right, so TSM. I think TSM is better than Team Liquid. I think TSM is better than FlyQuest. I don't think that I don't think that they're better than Mad Lions, though. So I'd have to leave TSM down here. In terms of players that I think might be top 20, it would only really be Bjergsen. And I know that's the argument that they were making uh, for ESPN Esports. Um, next up, Gen G. So here's where we should start getting um, some big shifts in, like, getting above... Uh, Mad Lions. So Genji, Rascal, a uh, pretty good player. Uh, I haven't been impressed by Rascal for most of the year, but I I don't hate Rascal, but Rascal is not really the the heartbeat of Genji. Uh, Clid, BDD, and Ruler are the three most important players for Genji, uh, partially because of the meta that we're in, but also because that's just generally how League of Legends works is for the first probably 15 minutes of the game those three whatever those three players do and kind of the jungler those are really the most important players and then the top lane sometimes can make an impactful play but most of the time it's just a target for the jungler or the mid laner to go after um so let's see gen g i think that clid is potentially a top 20 player i think bdd is potentially a top 20 player and i think ruler is potentially a top 20 player uh, Ruler is obviously the best player on Genji. That's not obvious. 
Ruler has been the most important player for Genji throughout the season because they kind of depended on Ruler to win a lot of these late game team fights. And when they're at their best, Ruler typically shines. So I think they're definitely better than Mad Lions. And they're definitely better than LGD. Um, an LGD versus Genji matchup would be very interesting to watch. Um, but I would expect Genji to win that pretty easily. I think that I think that's that's the kind of matchup where you'd really see the difference between um, styles for Longxi against Rascal. Even though they're even though they both can play basically anything. I feel like Rascal's a better carry player than Longxi, which would force Longxi into the worst matchups in a lot of drafts. The more passive side of things. So the action would be determined by Rascal, and uh, yeah, I just feel like Genji would end up beating them pretty easily. Um, and then Clit against Peanut. That could be a little bit explosive. I think I think Peanut definitely has chances to win the early game against Clid just because Peanut's a very good player. That's nothing. That's not a slight at Clid. BDD against Shie. Mm, that one's actually a lot closer. Uh, there, I don't have enough. I don't have enough to really differentiate between the two. I think like. You're at this point. You're really only going to be able to clearly put players into tiers. I think that anyone who tells you like BDD is definitely better than Shie or Shie is definitely better than BDD is kind of fooling themselves. Um, it's like a threshold kind of thing. Like you need to be at least this good to be able to compete at this level. Um, but like depending on the meta, depending on how all of your drafts go, depending on how the interactions in the game go, depending on like your read on the meta, um, it could make a very good player or a player with very good talent and high upside not perform at their peak. So I think talent wise, they're they're very similar. Um, and then Ruler is better than Kramer, so that's that. DRX. So Doran. I'm basically just going to compare them to, to Genji at this point, because I think that DRX is better than Genji. So, DRX against Rascal, or Doran against Rascal, in my opinion, they're basically even. I think that most of the winning difference is created by the other players on this team, so I'm not going to focus on top lane. Uh, Piosic against Clid. I think that they're both... They both can carry from the jungle on things like Olaf and Hecarim. Like, whenever I think of Piosic, I think of Olaf. And when I, like, I just think that... I think that it's still a jungle carry meta. But teams have moved pretty far away from Graves in the LEC when we saw the LEC play last and like the LCK was never as convinced of Graves I think as everybody else but I still think it's the best so with with my read on the meta I can't really differentiate between the two very much it's like I said before with the threshold argument I think they both reach that threshold of being very good players uh Chovy is obviously one of the best players um one of the best mid laners at Worlds and one of the best players at Worlds uh, Cho I think you can tell a difference between Chovy and Shie and Chovy and BDD. Um, that's really all I have to say about that. Deft has been underperforming, I think. Like, you don't really have the same kind of uh, amazing peaks that we come to associate with Deft. But Deft, in, in my mind, has always been more of like a macro-oriented will play around his teammate the correct way and will be able to mechanically survive these team fights that are pretty difficult. Um, it's more like a counter puncher than, uh, than somebody like Showmaker, who is just a very aggressive player. Uh, and then Karia, I think, is probably one of the biggest difference maker support players at the World Championship. So I definitely have DRX above Gen G. Players that I would consider for a top 20 list, probably just Chovy and Karia. And it's because they're difference makers at their position. Like like I said, ESPN Esports didn't really have a clear criteria for how they were 
um, how they were picking these players. So I think I'm just going to make it like difference makers. Because if I'm being honest, if this was like a like who are the 20 best players talent wise playing at Worlds, like how are you not gonna take like three or four players from DRX, Damwon, Top Esports, JDG, Sunning, like that would be the start, and then you would kind of have to shoehorn like other players in. Like Ruler probably gets onto that list, may and that's about it. Like that's that's about it. I, I don't I don't think that you can really convince me that players from Rogue Fanatic or G2 deserve to be very high on that list. Maybe one player maybe one player out of, out of those three teams, in my opinion, is a top 20 player at Worlds. And we'll get there. Alright. Don Juan Nogri, uh, he had some kind of huge medical problem recently. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh... Flame is their backup. That'd be funny if Flame actually had to play. Uh, Canyon is a player that I've kind of slept on all year. Um, I was never really convinced, but Canyon's been playing very well. Showmaker, I think, has to be considered for one of the top five players at Worlds. Uh, Ghost and Barrel um, are not really the difference makers for their team. They kind of just play the game Canyon and Showmaker dictate, which is a good thing to have on your team don't get me wrong but they're not the difference makers for their own team um and then not Nogari should be considered my back is killing me not killing me but it's getting there uh all right so here's where we start making people sad rogue we have finn finn is not a top 20 player at worlds we have inspired inspired is not a top 20 player at worlds we have larson larson's not a top 20 player at worlds we have Hansama. Hansama is not a top 20 player at Worlds. And we have Vander. Vander is definitely not a top 20 player at Worlds. So let's go Rogue against Team Liquid. I think I like... I think I like Rogue better. I like Rogue better than Team Liquid. Rogue against FlyQuest. Inspired and Larson against Santorin and Power of Evil. That's a lot closer than I think people want to want to actually admit. The difference maker would probably be Han Sama there. I think Han Sama kind of push, pushes them a little over the edge in that matchup specifically. Because you have another reliable player. Um, Rogue against TSM. I think Broken Blade is better than Finn. I think that Spica and Inspired are much closer than people would would want to admit. I think Bjergsen is just as good as Larson, and in this kind of tournament, I'd probably rather have Bjergsen on my team. Uh, I like Hansama more than I like Double Lift at this point, but I'll put Rogue over TSM. Rogue against Mad Lions, uh, Finn against Arome. I don't get. I don't care about those two players. Shadow against Inspired. I think Inspired had a better season. I think Shadow will be the better player long term. Larson against Humanoid. Very even. Very very even or close to even. Hansama against Karsi. I think Hansama is the better player. And then Vander against Kaiser. Eh. Don't really care. Um, so they're basically even. I think stylistically... I like, I think I like Mad Lions more for this tournament. Like, if I was trying to predict how the teams would finish, I would pre I would predict Mad Lions going further than Rogue, assuming Mad Lions can make it out of the playing stage. Uh, so I'll do that. Rogue, and I'll put Inspired. Larson and Hans Sama. I do think that Han Sama, like in uh, in some of these games where it's very important to be a highly skilled mechanical player, I think Han Sama would have a chance to outplay some situations in close games that would make people like fundamentally change how they look at Han Sama, because he he does he's not really asked to do that very often. Uh, Fnatic, so Fnatic, Fnatic 
pretty good team. They're another team that I said all year long, like, don't worry, eventually they'll get there. Whippo, Selfmade, Nemesis, Reckless, Hillisong. Everybody's going to say Selfmade and Reckless deserve to be in the top 20 list. I, I'll, I'll, I'll include them for my potential player pool, but I don't know how you can really tell me that Reckless is better than a lot of the other 80 carries that are here. I just don't think that's true. And then same thing with Selfmade. I think Selfmade had a really good playoffs. Um, we're, and, and this is the important distinction. We are in a carry jungler meta, and Selfmade has been carrying. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that Selfmade is more important or better than a lot of these other players in different roles just because they're asked to carry a team. Like it, it's not an easy thing to do to carry a team. But if this was a top-centric meta, it doesn't mean that we should have more top laners considered more talented because they are the focal point of their teams. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, it's just unfair to think of it that way, even. Um, so Fnatic against Team Liquid, I think Fnatic is better. Fnatic against FlyQuest, I think Fnatic is better. Uh, Fnatic against Tissom, I think Fnatic is better. Fnatic against Rogue, I think Fnatic is better. Fnatic against Mad Lions. I don't like Nemesis at all. I Nemesis has been very lackluster. I think I think a lot of it has been with the champions that he's been forced to play, and I don't think a lot of their drafts made sense. And their macro game has been amazing for the most part. Um... I do trust their macro. So Fnatic against, Ro Fnatic against Rogue, I trust Fnatic to make the right decisions more often than Rogue will make the right decisions. Fnatic against Mad Lions. I, this is, it's, a, it's really tough for them like head-to-head -head because I think that Mad Lions has a higher mechanical ceiling and the more talented players overall. I definitely prefer Shadow and Humanoid in that matchup. I think Bwipo is like the... Bwipo is like the kind of... He's the old man playing... I'm not saying Bwipo is old. I'm saying Bwipo has old man basketball game where, like, he'll pull out, like, those, like, cheesy pump fakes that get you to bite and then he just gets an easy bucket. Or just, like, those tricks those tricks that work for some reason. Like, Bwipo is a tricky guy. And I think that it's important to give credit to that, but it, I don't. I think it makes him seem better than he is probably. It's tough. I like Bwipo. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but he's not one of the best players at Worlds. Fnatic against Mad Lions. Fnatic against Mad Lions. Shadow versus Selfmade. I think Shadow's going to have a better career than Selfmade, probably. Humanoid against Nemesis. I prefer Humanoid. Reckless against Karzy. I think... I think... That's a very close matchup because stylistically they're very similar. Um, I probably like Mad Lions better at this point. I, I, I like Mad Lions more, like in terms of their public perception is lower than Fnatic right now because Fnatic's been better, bank, playing better recently. But I think they're basically like the same. They're stylistically different. Like stylistically... Mad can play with G2. Fnatic against G2, I always just think G2 is going to destroy him. But we'll put Fnatic up there for now. I guess it's kind of chalky, which is annoying. Oh, okay, so let's do Fnatic against LGD. So, Bwipo against Longshi. I think, I think I would probably prefer the Bwipo side of that. Peanut against Selfmade, I prefer Peanut. Shie against Nemesis, I prefer Shie. Uh, Kramer against Reckless. Again, I think stylistically, the type of player that they are, they're very similar. So I don't think that the edge of Reckless over Kramer is anywhere close to what the, the public thinks that it is. Um, and then Mark against Hillisong, I don't care. Um... So I think I have to give it to LGD. I think LGD is just a better team than Fnatic. Um, I gotta be honest, right? I gotta be honest. Self-made and reckless. 
and Whippo are the three most important players for that team. I don't think any of them would really get into my top 20. Uh, G2. You all slept on G2 for a long time. But they got there. They finally got there. Um, G2 against Team Liquid. I think that I like G2, obviously. I like G2 more than FlyQuest, TSM, Rogue, Mad Lions, Fnatic. Now the question is really G2 versus somebody like LGD. So I like Wonder more than Long Shi. Uh, I like Peanut more than Yonkos. I like Caps more than Shie, probably. Caps is a very good player. Caps is the guy that I'm not... Caps is the player from Europe that I would say, okay, he, he could probably be uh, uh, like a player in China or Korea. Uh, Perks has been horrible this year, but... Perks is another player who could get to that level, and that's why G2 is so good. And that's why Wonder and Yonkos are thought of as being better players than they really are. Uh, Mickey is a good player, but um, relative to the other supports that are out there, not a big difference maker. Like, I, th I think supports are kind of like centers in football, I would say, where, like, yeah, you're an important part of the team, but... It's really tough to figure out when you're playing good, and it's easy to tell when you're playing bad. So, tough. It's tough to analyze support play because so like at this level, all these supports are doing the same thing. So the only real way to differentiate your, yourself as, as as a support is to make some of these flashy plays, and that's the that's the worst way to dictate who is a better player than the other players. Because like you figure they can all. It's like they can all snap the ball. They can all make most of their blocks. But what percentage of their blocks do they really make? What, how, like, how impactful are their calls at the line? Like when they're changing uh, the blocking scheme and stuff like that. Or saying, that guy's going to blitz. Like helping the quarterback pick, pick up or dissect the defense. Um, that's kind of what the support does. Is that they try to think ahead. They try to anticipate what the enemy team is going to do. Set up vision. Look for plays look for that like highlight second level block but you're not always going to get it in every single game and that doesn't mean that the support didn't do their job see i'm teaching you i'm teaching you important things right now you need to understand this you need to appreciate this uh so i do like g2 more than lgd for that reason i think caps and perks stylistically against lgd would be able to pull off that win Gen G's a little tougher, so Wonder against Rascal. I think G2 is more likely to go off the board and pick something crazy in the top lane, like some some kind of like Soraka top. If there's a if there's a Soraka top esque champion they're working on right now, Clid is better than Yonkos. Period. Caps and BDD, I think, is relatively close. Right now, Ruler against Perks. I think Ruler is a much better player than Perks right now in terms of form. Um, Perks, is, Perks is a really good player, though. And I, I hope that Perks gets uh, his act together for, for Worlds. Because um, he is a, a very exciting player to watch. The one thing I would also say about G2 is they have chances to flex between AD carry and mid. And I would not be surprised if they actually pulled it out at Worlds. Like, if they see a very good matchup that they like for perks or caps to, sw to roll swap, I think they would go for it. Uh, but it depends on how the quote-unquote meta changes at Worlds. Um, did, they, did they announce which patch was going to be the Worlds patch? Because I have to do a patch breakdown for that. And then I'll... Yeah, I have to do that. When are these first games... Play in. Give me your info. Hmm? Schedule. What? What's going on here? They're making me chase it down. 
Worlds 2020. Whatever. They didn't want me to find out easy enough. So now I'm just not going to even try. All right. So G2 against Genji. I want to be clear about this because this is what would happen. If these two teams played in the group stage if they if they somehow get into the same group genji and g2 everyone's going to go into that match saying it's a it's like oh you know genji is the third team from korea and g2 is the best team from europe and g2 has done this at worlds um they're gonna give they're gonna give a good argument because you haven't seen them play yet but the sports books will I would be shocked if the sports books listed G2 as anything over minus 125 against Gen G cuz I think the sports book knows that it would get hammered with Gen G money at that point. Um I think that Gen G is the the sharp side in that potential matchup in the group stage. Uh the reason I the reason I brought it up is because if we change when they play each other, if, if you have Gen G against G2 in the semifinals, <clears throat> and you've seen Gen G play really well against other Korean teams or teams from China or dismantles a different European team, then everybody would be a lot less certain about G2 at that point. They'd be like, oh, you know, G2, they've looked pretty good so far at World, but Gen G is the best Korean team now because like, everybody loves changing their opinions a lot. So, I think that Genji is probably underappreciated at this point. Um, and for that reason, I'm going to have to put G2 below Genji. Everybody wants Europe to do really well at Worlds. Um, but, I mean, you can't always get what you want. You, you try sometimes. Uh and you might find you get what you need but you don't get what you want you, you can't always get what you want you don't always get you want what you want um that's just the way it is things will never be the same that's just the way it is um okay so now we're on to the lpl okay so obviously sunning uh I said that Sunning was going to shock, like shock a lot of people. I thought that they had chances to win the summer split in China before the season even started. I said, you know, the meta is going to start going towards AD carries. Huan Feng is really good. Huan Feng, you know, if they start playing around this team and they pick up some early victories in the summer season, you know, I think that Sunning could actually be a contender to win the championship. And look at them. Look at them. They're making me proud. They're, they're almost making me cry. Uh, but I will not cry. I'm too manly. Uh, do you not see this beard? Uh, manly. Um, okay. So, Sunning... Just, just to, I guess, piss people off. Sunning against G2. Let's start there. Bin against Wonder. Bin is a better player than Wonder. There is no doubt in my mind that if Bin played against Wonder... 100 times in a solo queue game where they were allowed to play like a more a wider variety of of champions and not really care about their teammates and just go at it 100 times in a row bin would win more than 50 of those games bin is a camille one trick so unless wonder is the best player in the world at beating up on camille uh he's gonna get put in a dumpster uh, so, Bin's better than Wonder. That's a guaranteed. S of M. S of M against Yonkos. S of M is definitely a better jungler than Yonkos. It is not... There's not even a question in my mind. S of M plays the, the champions that you're supposed to play in this meta 
Yankos does not. You want to know why? Because Yankos isn't that good. He's not that good anymore. He is a playmaker. He's fun to watch. He's fun to listen to when he's in interviews and talk about League of Legends. But unless there are a lot of other champions that come out in this meta, G2 is going to be at a disadvantage with Yankos as their jungler. He is a liability right now in draft. Uh, I think it's undeniable at this point. So unless the meta shifts to a point where Yankos can start blind picking a lot of other weird type of carry junglers, or if he is miraculously a very good carry jungle when he hasn't shown it all year, those are the only ways that Yankos could maybe be better than SFM. But SFM, in my opinion, is a better player. Period. Now, caps against Angel. Everyone knows that I am not a big Angel fan. Uh, I think that Caps is a better player than Angel, but I think that it's much closer than people would like to admit. Um, and the reason I say that is because Angel is a professional player in China, which is a more difficult region than Europe. Uh, the solo queue ladder is more difficult, uh, and the professional play itself is more difficult. Uh, you're, you're continuously playing against better competition and, con and always getting better. And I, I don't think that Caps would fall on his face if he was in China. I think that he could, he could be a good player on a good team. Um, but that's not much different than what Angel is. A good player on a good team. Uh, but I'll give Caps the benefit of the doubt just because I'm feeling nice. Um, next up, Huan Feng against Perks. This is not even close. Huan Feng is significantly better than Perks at League of Legends in 2020. Uh, I think Perks is talented. Perks is a world-class player that is undeniable at this point in his career. I'm not saying that he's not a world-class player. Huan Feng is potentially the best AD carry in China. That's his potential. If Perks went to China, Perks would not have the potential of being the best AD carry in China. That's a fact. Factual statement. Now, that's not... That's not. It doesn't mean that if G2 played Sunning, they wouldn't have chances to win the game. I think that they would have chances to beat Sunning. But when they, if they play each other, I will be on the Sunning side of things. You heard it here first. I believe in my, my Sunning boys. Now don't go, don't go make, don't go make an Uncle Pico look like a fool. Uh, but I definitely have them over, over G two, um, against Gen G. I think I think that Bin is probably better than Rascal, but I don't know enough about Rascal. And uh, I don't know enough about them in this kind of meta that we might see. It's it's really tough with top lane because top lane shifts depending on what the team needs. And a lot of these games just aren't decided by top laners. Um, and if they were playing one another, I wouldn't really expect it to happen. Unless the draft like interactions dictated it. Clid against S of M. I think it's very close. I think S of M because he's on a he because he was not thought of he was not thought of as a top jungler going into this year, so a lot of people are kinda of sleeping on him. I think that uh I think Clid's probably a little better, but it's closer than people are going to admit. BDD against Angel, I think BDD's better. Do I? Yeah. Um, Ruler against Huan Feng, I think Huan Feng is better. I think Ruler is the more known commodity, known quantity. Uh, and I didn't even mention Sword Art in the last one, but Sword Art is a very good player. Definitely a world, a world caliber player. Look. Excuse me. Um, so Sword Art against Life. Sword Art's been there before. Um, so I'd probably take Sword Art in that matchup. I think Sunning could win, but I think Gen G is probably better than Sunning. And that, that hurts me to say. I want Sunning to win Worlds. I mean, that would be amazing. Imagine, imagine being me and being able to point to a video saying that Sunning was good enough to win China... Uh, which would automatically qualify them as a potential world champion. Uh, 
so for this team, I think at Worlds, the performance is really going to come down to S of M and Fuan Feng. Like, will they be able to carry the team to a championship? Angel, and I'm, I mean, I don't give Angel enough credit ever. So, we'll throw him on there. This is me giving him credit. JDG. Um, okay. There we go. All right. Zoom, obviously a very good top laner. People gave him way too much credit, uh, but he is a very good top laner. Kanavi, one of the best junglers in the world. He's going to be very high on this list of top 20 players. Yagao and Loken, I've always had a pretty low opinion of them. I think that Kanavi really does an incredible job making his teammates a lot better than they really are. But it's, it's tough to say that they would be worse than caps and perks especially Logan against perks because perks is not looking good uh so i would definitely take jdg over g2 uh, i would definitely take jdg over sunning because the difference in the jungle is severe enough uh kanavi against clid i think that kanavi is better than clid i think that zoom is better than rascal eh. Zoom's better than Rascal. Kanabi's better than Clid. Yagao and Loken against BDD and Ruler is very close. Lumao, that's a playmaker right there. Uh, hopefully Bard's very important in this in at Worlds. I think that'd be a lot of fun to watch. Um, very good champion. Um, and last we have Top Esports. Oh, so I didn't put them in here. So okay, against DRX, JDG. Doran against Zoom, I'd probably rather have Zoom. Kanavi against Kanavi against Canyon, I'd probably rather have Kanavi. Showmaker and Yagao, I'd rather have Showmaker. Nogri against Zoom. It, it, it's a difference in style. Like Zoom is a team player, Nogri is a carry player. So it's they're both good at different things. It's tough to compare them to one another. I think most people would say Zoom is probably a better player. I don't know. I think his champion pool is a lot more limited than people want to admit. He's he's very good at the champions that he plays, though. Um, Yagao, or not that he's limited. It's what he shows on stage and what he plays for his team is is not very diverse. Yagao, Loken, and Lu Mao. I like JDG more than Damwon. All five, like, if your argument is that I don't give enough credit to Logan and Yigao, um, and yeah, if you think I don't give enough credit to those two players, then they would definitely have to be on the on the top twenty players at Worlds. Um, but they're really not the best player on their own team, so that's that's kind of how I look at things. Like, if you're not the best player on your own team, then why would I really want to rank you in a top twenty? Like, that would have been a much more interesting list. Like, because it would made it would have made more sense. Uh, top esports. Uh, so top esports. I'm just going to compare them to JDG because I think those are the two best teams at Worlds this year. It doesn't mean that they're going to be the two teams in the finals. It just means that going into the tournament, they I think they should be thought of as the favorites with the best chances of winning. Three six nine against Zoom. I prefer Zoom, but three six nine has a diverse champion pool, can play both sides of the matchup. Like if if it came down to 369 having to play a tank and Zoom having to play a carry champion, I'd probably say that 369 is better at playing a tank than Zoom is at playing a hard carry. I could be wrong about that, but we just don't see it. We don't see it very often from him. Um, Karsa against Kanavi, definitely Kanavi favored. Knight against uh, Yagao, definitely prefer Knight. Jackie Love against Loken, I think it's a lot more, it's a lot closer than people want to admit. And then Yu Yanja and Lu Mao. I'm assuming those are both the starters. Uh, I would say that Lu Mao is a better playmaker. Yu Yanja has moments where he looks like a liability. But you have to have top esports as a top team. There's no. There's no. Like, I think. 
that JDG has a good matchup with Top Esports, but I think that Top Esports against everybody else, probably an easier way to win the game. So we'll put Top Esports, and then... I mean, I don't know if Carson... is definitely a world-class player. I don't know if he really deserves to be on a top 20 list, though. Like, he, like, he is one of the 20 best players there. But I feel like putting him in a top 20 list gives the wrong impression. The wrong impression. So it's obviously... Whoa. Knight is the best player on their team. Jackie Love. Eh, Jackie Love or 369 is the second best player. I know that 369 is kind of trolly, but... Uh, you don't have bad games unless you're trying to be great. That's my explanation for 369. Uh, and then you, Yan, Ja. So how many players do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 20. We have 38 players. So 5, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Like this is how I think the top, this is how I think the, it, if you're taking if you're making a top twenty list I think almost all of the players have to come from these teams. Maybe you can get peanut. So like since I know how it's going at this point I would say probably get rid of that. Eh wait. I guess I wouldn't want to overpopulate it with players from top esports or JDG. It's, it's such a difficult argument to make. Like, you're comparing apples and oranges a lot of the time. Like, the the job of these players is so different. Uh, like, an AD carry versus a support. And the, it's so much easier to identify a good AD carry when they make a highlight play. It's just so easy. Like, it's like scoring a touchdown. It's like, oh, I did it. I scored a touchdown. Look at me. I'm so good. But it's just they get way too much credit. All right, so let's see what, e what let's see what ESPN Esports did before I go any further. Actually, I guess so. That's my answer. My answer for if it was a top twenty, it would be all five players from top esports, all five players from JDG, Canyon, Showmaker, Nogri, Chovy, Keria, Clid, BDD, Ruler, S of M, Huan, Huan Fung, Angel, Caps, Perks, Peanut, Shie. And then it gets, then it gets really questionable about who you're involving. Like I'm assuming that ESPN Esports will include Self Made, Reckless, Humanoid, Inspired, Larson, like all these players. So that's what I'm preparing myself for. Uh, let's. I had it minimized on a separate screen. I did my best to not look at it, but here we go. So their number twenty player at Worlds is Reckless. Uh, 19, Karsa, Shie, Loken, Selfmade. I'm doing the list off, off the screen. I think they both, think they oh. both deserve to be in this. Go next. Are they describing it? Like, what's going on? Alright, go to the next one. I gotta, thank you. Peanut. S of M. Oh my god, Wonder? What the hell? How is Wonder... What the hell? Nogri. BDD. Canyon. 369. Ruler. Kanavi. Kanavi's too low on this list. Jackie loves too high on this list. Night, Chovy, Shoe, Shoemaker, Showmaker, Zoom, Caps. Caps is not a top five player at Worlds. What just happened? Why is it? Oh, wait. Actually, yeah. Why is it? Oh, because I changed the. Uh... There you go. 
Man. So let me do this. All right, so Knight. Knight's on there. Jackie Love is on there. 369 is on there. Karsa is on there. Yu Yanja is thought of as a liability sometimes. I get why you'd leave off. I, I get I get why you'd leave Yu Yanja off of the list. Um Kanavi is on the list. Zoom is on the list. Loken is on the list. Yagao is not on the list. I get that. Lu Mao is not on the list. I guess. Canyon's on the list. Showmaker's on the list. Nogri's on the list. Okay. DRX. Chovy. Deft isn't on here. Keria should definitely be on this list. See, and this this is what I'm talking about. Like, it's it's difficult to give a lot of credit to support players, and there is not a support player on this list. Um, but Keria should definitely be on this list. Because the way I look at it is, if DRX performs well at Worlds, everybody's going to be talking about Keria, like how Keria impacts the game, makes all these high, like highlight real plays. So I'm kind of anticipating what everybody is miss, go, going to miss. Gen G, we have Clid. Clid's not up there. I mean, Clid is a better player than Selfmade. Like, if you were starting a team tomorrow, who would you rather have Clid or Selfmade? If you answer Selfmade, well, okay. We all believe you, bud. Uh, BDD is on the list. Rulers on the list. Clid should definitely be up here. So, like, if you're getting rid of Yu Yanja, I would I would probably just put in Keria and Clid. So, this was four. This was three. This was three. This was one. I don't get that. Uh, Gen G. Wait. Yeah. Clid? No. BDD? Yes. Ruler? Yes. S of M? Is Huan Feng not on the list? What? I mean, that's a joke. <laughs> You'd rather have Reckless than Huan Feng? Are you kidding me? What is that? Okay, so let's let's do this as well. So the reason I did this is because we have Jackie Love, Ruler, and then Reckless. Those are the only three eighty carries on this list. You're telling me that Reckless is better than Yagao? Maybe. Ghost? Maybe. Yagao? Probably not. Ghost? Maybe. Uh, who am I forgetting? Deft. Reckless is not better than Deft. <laughs> uh, Reckless is definitely not better than Huan Feng. That's wild. So, nope. Like, how does that even happen now? Let's see. Caps is up there, Perks is not, makes sense. Peanut is up there, Shea is up there, that makes sense to me. Self-made and Reckless both made the list. I mean, I'm glad they're down here, but... 
it's still too high. If if you had one match to win, would you rather have self made or Karsa? Like how are you not answering Karsa? It just seems disingenuous because they want to push their European agenda. One, two, three. Wonder being up there is mind blowing to me. One, two, three. Four. Four players in the top twenty for Europe. I mean it's 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 a lot better than I thought they were gonna do. Who am I missing? Oh, Wonder, because... All right, so it's it's pretty even. There should probably be Caria, and if they're including Reckless, then there should be three, because Depth is better than Reckless. Like, re there's no way Reckless is on this list. So I would I would say it's only really, like like I said, when you get to the when you get to this caliber of player, like the players that are at these events, a lot of them are very similar. It's just some of them have been winning more than the, than others, so you're gonna say they're better than them. Um, this is wrong. This is wrong. So I would say if I was doing best players in terms of like how much they actually impact their team being able to win, I would say Knight. If I said it, if if I based it off of what I would say, then Showmaker would probably be Kanavi and Showmaker would probably be even higher than Knight. Uh, I think Top Esports is much more of a team effort than people admit or than people realize. So Knight, Showmaker, Kanavi. I'd probably have Kanavi as the third best player at Worlds. I mean, it just feels so arbitrary ranking them this way. Like, it, it's, it's really difficult ranking them this way. Because, like, if you're not the most important player on your team, then how would I rank you higher than somebody who's the most important player on their team? It just feels bad. Knight, show me. Oh. So we have yes, 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 yes. Jackie Love. Uh, I could put caps there probably without feeling too throw up y about it. Oh, I need to put Caria in a spot that actually makes sense. That's the truth right there. Zoom. Caps. Jackie Love. I think Jackie Love is really overrated at this point. Obviously a very good player, but people give him too much credit. Uh... Eh. I don't yeah I guess yeah 369 there's some uh, yelling going on downstairs I don't know if you can hear that or not uh, I know what it might sound like but that's not what's going on downstairs uh, they're just yelling uh <laughs> oh uh i could probably get canyon up there oh we need huan fung up here too
Do I think... Eh, Huang Feng's even higher than that. I think I'd rather have Huang Feng than Ruler. But do we need to go that crazy at this point? I don't think so. Jackie Love, 369, S of M. I can put an augury there and not feel bad about it. I think I think Peanut's better than S of M in a vacuum. But S of M has played better this year. Nogri. I mean, I don't know why Wonder is on this list. So I'm getting rid of Wonder. Peanut, self made. Shie. Loken. Karsa should probably be higher. Uh, so I got rid of Reckless. I'll put. You're welcome, you're still on the list. Um, oh, and self made. So that's how I would do it. And like I said, I think it's kind of arbitrary at, the, at that point, ranking a lot of these players. I, I, it's For me, it's more important, like, how important are you to your team and how good is your team. Like, this is the ranking that I would take away from this video, not this. But that's all I got for you. That went on pretty long. That was over an hour. But uh, I'll, I'll be putting out some more Worlds content. I'm also putting out um, an almost perfect lineup video for NFL. And I'm going to do a video with Billy Von Elds tomorrow the millionaire maker himself uh so watch out for that thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later